Inflation continues to run rampant and it's distorting the entire economy. In a recent video, I explain how rising prices create the illusion of economic growth. And they are also allowing the US government to stealthily default on its massive debt. This is not a sign of a strong economy. GDP growth for the second quarter of the year came in lower than expected. Even so, the economy still appears to be experiencing solid growth. But a deeper dig into the numbers reveals a lot of smoke and mirrors. The media's focus was on the 6.5% number, so-called, real, growth. That number is adjusted for inflation. Minus inflation, the nominal GDP gain was about 13%. The divergence between these two numbers really puts the inflation level into perspective. The deflator used in the GDP calculation was about 6.4%. That means almost half of the nominal GDP growth was due to inflation and not actual economic growth. Comparing the GDP deflator with CPI reveals that real growth may even be overstated. If you add up Q2 CPI and annualized it the same way they calculate GDP, you get 9.35%. So, if you use the CPI as a deflator, you get annualized GDP at a mere 3.5%. CPI doesn't capture the real price level. If we could deflate the GDP using a legitimate measure of rising prices, we likely had an economic contraction in Q2. So, despite all this fanfare about all this economic growth, all of this economic growth is, in fact, an illusion that is created by inflation. Inflation creates the illusion of economic growth, even as the economy is not growing. Breaking down the GDP components further pierces the illusion of real economic growth. Virtually all of the Q2 GDP growth came from an 11.8% leap in consumer spending. This accounted for 70.6% of total GDP, the most ever. It was the first time consumer spending has ever made up more than 70% of GDP. Meanwhile, private investment, the GDP component that signals the potential for real growth in the future, was down 3.5%. So, we had no legitimate economic growth at all. All we had was people spending money. And one of the reasons that they spent more money is because all the things that they were buying cost more. So, it's rising prices, not a growing economy, that is behind the gain in the GDP. And where did a lot of Americans get the money that they spent? From the Fed. The Federal Reserve printed the money and then the US government distributed all that printed money to Americans in the form of stimulus checks and enhanced unemployment benefits. So, we printed a bunch of money and spent it buying higher priced stuff, and that is the reason that we had this big increase in GDP. But this is not a sign of a strong economy. It simply evidences a weak economy that is being camouflaged by inflation. This inflation also has implications on the $28.5 trillion national debt. Using the 6.5% GDP deflator effectively wipes out $1.5 trillion of debt. It's not officially defaulted on, but for all practical purposes, it's been repudiated by the government. When the government creates inflation, and the value of money goes down, that means the value of their debt goes down. That means when the US government repays its creditors the money that it borrowed, creditors are getting back money that has less purchasing power. That is in effect a stealth default. Creditors are getting back less in real terms than they loaned, which is one of the main reasons the government is deliberately causing inflation because it has no other way to get out of this debt. The federal government doesn't have the money to pay off the debt. It doesn't have the integrity to legitimately default. So it does a stealth default through inflation. Of course, the debt is growing so fast now, the stealth default can't keep up. The debt-to-GDP ratio continues to rise despite the fact that the government is repudiating part of the debt through inflation. Even while effectively decreasing the debt by 6.5% a year via inflation, the government is expanding the debt by some 15% per year. So, we're still going deeper into debt despite the fact that so much of it is being repudiated by inflation, that is how big this problem is. So, in other words, if the US government really wants to use inflation to shrink the absolute amount of debt in relation to the economy, given how big the deficits are right now, we're going to need a whole lot more inflation. And you know what? That's exactly what we're going to get. We're going to get much more inflation than what we've already experienced. In fact, we're already getting more inflation than the government is admitting to. But even that number is going to get much bigger.
After hotter than expected CPI data came out for the sixth time this year, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell spent two days on Capitol Hill trying to convince everybody that there's no problem. The Fed is betting the farm on transitory inflation. It's really got no other choice. Powell made every effort to sound reassuring and let everybody know there was nothing to worry about during his two days of congressional testimony. And he did it with a straight face, which was not an easy task considering the BS that he was required to constantly put out in order to put lipstick on this pig of an economy. And not even so much the economy that's the pig, but the monetary policy that Powell himself has been administering. Powell continued to peddle the transitory inflation narrative. Powell and others have the transitory period wrong. What was transitory is not the high inflation that we're experiencing now. What was transitory is all the low inflation we experienced in the past, especially the low inflation that we enjoyed since the 2008 financial crisis. That's what was transitory. What's happening now is we're transitioning back to the reality. We're actually catching up to all the inflation that we should have been held accountable for back then, only now we're starting to feel the impact. We're in a transition from low inflation to high inflation and it's about to get a lot worse. Meanwhile, the Fed added another $103.9 billion to its balance sheet in the most recent week for which we have data. That pushed the balance sheet to a new record of $8.202 trillion. For the Fed to be talking about how inflation is transitory while the Fed continues to throw gasoline on the inflationary fire, on what basis would it have to claim all of this is transitory? On the other side of the equation, the US government continues to run massive deficits month after month. And there is no end in sight to the spending. We have huge pieces of legislation on deck for the government to spend trillions and trillions of dollars that it has no intention of collecting in taxes and is completely relying on the Federal Reserve to print all the money, which means the inflation fire that Powell claims is going to go out by itself because it's all transitory is about to get much, much bigger because he's throwing all this gasoline on it. During Powell's appearance before Congress, Republicans constantly brought up inflation and blamed it on Biden's spending. That's certainly one aspect of the problem. But Republicans ignore all of the borrowing and spending that went on throughout the entire Trump administration. And they also ignore the fact that the government can't borrow and spend to this degree without the central bank. They forget it takes two to tango. Biden can't spend the money that the Fed doesn't print. If the Federal Reserve acted responsibly and refused to monetize all these deficits, then the deficits wouldn't be there. And yet, Republicans on both the House and Senate committees praised Powell and the Fed for the great job they've done. This is more than a little convoluted. Because the Fed has not acted as an independent agency interested in preserving the integrity of our money and pursuing a mandated price stability, because it is a puppet of whatever administration happens to be in power and it's not really independent, well, that's the reason that Biden was able to get away with these deficits. In fact, that's the reason that Trump was able to get away with his deficits, which is the hypocrisy of this whole thing. Both parties are to blame, but the real culprit is the Fed. In his prepared remarks, Powell talked up the economy. But then he insisted it was too early to withdraw any of the monetary support. It's not even time to slow asset purchases. So, it's not that this great economy still needs stimulus. It still needs every bit as much stimulus as it needed before it was great. When we were in the depths of the COVID recession, we have to have that much stimulus now. Even though the economy is supposedly so much better, we can't even dare reduce the amount of stimulus. He's not even talking about taking away the stimulus. We just can't even have less stimulus than the stimulus we have now. The real issue is the Fed can't fight inflation without collapsing the entire economy. We're going to have to collapse the bubble that was inflated not just now with Biden, but that Donald Trump helped inflate. And of course Barack Obama. But then George Bush before him. Nobody wants to hear the truth. Powell doesn't want to speak the truth. And none of the congressmen or senators really wants to hear the truth. So, Powell keeps on lying and then you've got a bunch of people in Congress who pretend to believe him. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe, sane, and healthy friends.